I don't know why it happened. I guess I tugged too hard. You know, people think about agriculture and they never think about, you know, how a goat gives birth. It's three in the morning and you're on the phone with a gecko telling him about the time that you ripped a baby goat in half. How do you feel about your life right now? Call from Tom. Hello? Hey, is this the gecko? Yeah, is this Tom? Yeah, this is Tom. How are you? I'm good. How are you? What's going on, baby? Nothing much. You know, I was looking at your stream and I had Gek in the last four letters. And I had to wait till it flashed for the numbers because I never really got that. Is that what, what are you I'm doing right now? I'm sitting at my desk. Just watching. Yeah. Hanging sitting out. at your desk. Hanging out. Well, well, listen, man. Is there anything in particular you called in to want to talk about? No, I've just been a long-time fan, I think. Well, it's thanks, interesting man. what you're doing. Thanks, man. Hmm. Um, all right, let me think of something. What's the most horrible thing you've ever seen? The most horrible thing I've ever seen? Hmm. I think it's when I was giving birth to a goat, well, assisting, aiding, giving birth to a goat. And then, like, it got kind of like ripped in half because I don't know why it happened. I guess I tugged too hard. And uh, just a real weird experience for me, I think. Um, you know, people think about agriculture and they never think about, you know, how a goat gives birth or whatnot. Um, you, how did you rip a goat in half? Well, I think it was a premature goat. So, like, the mother started, like, crowning, and you have to pick it by the hind legs. And I don't think it was ready to be born yet. I don't know. I'm not a veterinarian. <laughs> What, so what the fuck were you do? What, what were you doing helping a goat give birth if you're not a veterinarian? Well, what are you going to do at like 3 a.m. on the farm, right? You're going to call a vet out there? No, you, you're going to try and help the goat out and assist it in labor or whatever. So like, are you, when you get, so like you were holding the head of the goat and then no, no, eventually you were just had the head? Oh, you were holding, but wait, so you, you ripped the goat, you ripped the mom in, uh, in half or the baby in half? The kid. Oh man. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good answer to the question. Thank you for answering honestly. Well, you're welcome. You kind of caught me off guard with that. I wasn't kind of expecting that, but hey, you got it, man. No, for somebody who wasn't expecting to have an answer, you de you definitely had an answer. I'm glad you're happy. Well, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm happy, but I'm. I'm satisfied. I I don't know. If, I don't know the word to express how I feel about the interaction that we just had. But why are you giving birth to goats? What's Do you live on a farm? Well, I lived on a farm when I was growing up. And maybe that was the reason because, you know, I was like an adolescent. I didn't know what I was doing. Maybe that was like a rite of passage for my parents or whatever, you know, like, oh, see how an animal gives birth and assisted in that. And uh, it didn't turn out well. I don't think they were too happy with my performance. Oh, that was the very first time you gave birth. You helped the goat give birth. I wouldn't say it's the first time. You know, I always aided, got like the bucket, and cleaned up the afterbirth. And, you know, but I guess it was my first hands-on type of situation. Okay. Man, isn't that that's the weird thing about the medical field, right? Is that there's always a first. Like there have been several uh babies born where the whoever's helping uh birth the baby, the OBGYN, the doctor person, it was their first one. I mean, I'm sure that there's like they've done it a lot of times like with supervision, but there's always 
There has to be the first time you do it with no training wheels. And they probably ripped a lot of kids in half. <laughs> so you know what? I wouldn't feel I too bad about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I suppose so. And I listen, didn't did you actually think I was... Go ahead. Please, continue. No, you. Okay. Um, no, I didn't think I was going to get through. It's like um, it's very late in the morning here. I'm just sitting at my desk. And, uh, Early in the morning. Where, what, where, what time is it? Where you are right now? It's three in the morning. It's three in the morning, and you're on the phone with a gecko, telling him about the time that you ripped a baby goat in half. How do you feel about your life right now? You know, actually, I feel pretty good. Um, good. You should. My, yeah, my life hasn't always been so stable. Um, I just got accepted into engineering college. I got a new oh, job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. What's the job? Um, it's in IT. Um, what do you what do you what do you are you big are you a big computer man? No. Uh, well, I mean I've studied it in the past and I've worked in the field as well as customer service. But um it's think like it's a, it's a step in the right direction okay it's it's funny to me because you grew up on a farm which is very um you know farmy and and i think of computers as being very computery and that those are those are sort of opposites oh that couldn't be i couldn't i wouldn't say it's the opposite i mean a lot of people think of farm work as you know, taking a hoe to the ground and plowing rows, but now our tractors are guided by GPS, and there's a lot of math involved in calculations. So, a lot of engineers are farmers. Hmm. So, what's your what's your dream in life? What's your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal. Well, I think I want to marry this woman in Sweden. <laughs> uh tell me about this woman in Sweden. Um I met her when I was a freshman in college. Um it's just everything she says about her life is just kind of like a fairy tale to me. It doesn't make sense. They have wild parties and raves and all types of intoxicants and imbibing and plenty of days off mm. so you want to live with her so that you can um get a visa and move to sweden and you and her can live the swedish dream well no she doesn't live in sweden she lives in the netherlands she actually doesn't want to live in sweden but i want to go to sweden because it's cold you like the cold i do like the cold Personally, I believe winter is going extinct, so I want to move somewhere very cold. Oh, because of global warming? Correct, yeah. Yeah. The Netherlands is awesome, too, though. There, I mean, there's plenty of uh, raving and uh, drugs, and, and there's plenty of raving and intoxication over there if you want to do that, if that's your, your M.O., well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's my M.O. It does seem like a very easy way of life. Um. Hey, look, tell that to the folks in rehab. <laughs> uh, okay, so how did you meet this Swedish woman? Yeah, I know you said you were a freshman in college, but what was the deal? Were you studying abroad? No, I wasn't. She actually came to, like, my podunk university out in the middle of a cornfield um and i was just known to hang out with the international students and at first you know i wasn't really interested in her but her friend and then as time grew well i wasn't so interested in her friend but more than her and i felt like 
you know, after I got to know her, I've grown fond of her. Mm. What, uh, why, why were you interested in her friend and not her first? What was, what was attracting you about the friends? She was German. Ah, you have German fever. Yeah, I guess so. I guess right, so. that austere type of personality has always got to me. I don't know. Maybe it the austere of personality of, of the German women. Okay. And then how would you describe uh, the, w- w- the, the, the Swedish girl? Very kind. Very sweet. She bakes. And, you know, it sends me pictures of her cakes and whatnot. Damn, she sounds cool. I can see why you want to marry her and do mommy yeah. all day. Maybe not so much as drugs, but, you know, something to settle down with. Well, Molly is a drug, but um, are you go- are you ever going to go visit her in the Netherlands? I think so. Um, I, I'm planning a trip to Mexico, and I want her to meet me down there, so... Okay. She's going to come meet you in Mexico. Well, that's the plan. Who knows? Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Are you... Uh, okay, so let's say... So it, is the deal with this, I am going to Mexico. You can come with me if you'd like, but if you don't come, I'm still going to go. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, I'm still going to okay. go to Mexico regardless. You're going by yourself? Um, well, maybe me and my dog. I don't know. Okay. All right, rock and roll. Where in Mexico? Uh, Mexico City. Mexico City. I went by myself to Mexico City. I had a great time. How did you do it? What was the logistics? Uh, I, went on the, I went on the internet, and I booked stuff, and then I, I physically got there. Okay. Okay. Are you having logist- are you having logistical issues? Well, I'm quite far away from Mexico. So me and my dog hopping in my car and driving, you know. Oh, away. okay. Well, look, if you want to bring the dog, I have no idea how to get a dog to Mexico. That sounds It sounds like a a fun adventure taking a dog to Mexico. I went without a dog. I don't have a dog, but uh Hmm. Why are you awake at three o'clock in the morning? Um, my new job starts like in a couple of weeks. Well, not even a couple of weeks, in like a week. So I figured, hey man, I, I might as well live it up. You know, this might be the last weekday I get to stay up like this. So, what do you do when you stay up really late? Um, I play War Thunder, and I listen to a bunch of old 80s music. Okay. You said, How old are you, by the way? I, th- I can't tell if you're 19 or 35. <laughs> Close. I'm the median. I'm 25. Oh, okay. You're my age. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, any Look advice to pass on to your fellow twenty-five-year-old? Any advice to pass on to you? I, you know, you don't need. I don't think you need my advice. You sound like you're living a good life. You have ass. You have dreams that seem well-intentioned. Um, you have you. You're traveling around. You're go. You're becoming an engineer. Um, you've lived. You've persevered through trauma of killing a goat baby. <laughs> Um, if you, do you have any fucking advice for me? Um, don't get married. <laughs> did you get married? I did, yeah. How'd that go? Bad. <laughs> Why did it go bad? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it was like, uh, not more so one issue, but like, compounded issues you know and just stacked on 
Okay. What were what were the issues? What was the main issue? What was the big? What issue made you the most upset? I'm sorry. What issue made you the most upset? Um, the issue that made me the most upset. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, that's. Um, she had a ferret, right? And we got this ferret together. We bought it. And, uh, well, the ferret would always fucking bite me. I'd be in my office working and it would only bite my feet. And then when it got tired of biting my feet, it would like crawl into my lap and like crawl all all over me. And then when I confronted her, it was like, hey, Hopper, you know, he's getting out of hand. Can we put him up? And she's like, no, Hopper needs his playtime. And I think that was one of the nails in the coffin. You know what I'm saying? She chose the ferret over you. I think she did, man. And look, I'm not going to lie. You seem like a great guy. But in all fairness, ferrets are pretty cool. And, um, you know, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I could see myself divorcing my significant other over a ferret. <laughs> so, and now you have a dog. And is, does your dog bite you? Is your dog an asshole? No, my dog is my best friend in my entire world. He, That's sweet. He goes with me everywhere. In fact, That's he sweet. hears me talking right now and he's. He's ready to go. Well, I hope you guys have a good... Look, um, I hope that you um, uh, go to Mexico City. I hope this Swedish woman comes with you because she seems really nice. Um, I don't think I don't know if there's any future in that relationship unless if one of you is willing to move. Um, but I don't know. You could write each other letters. That sounds romantic. I've enjoyed having this conversation with you. I feel like, I, I feel like we're having a sleepover. Well, thank you, Gek. Man, it was a pleasure talking to you as well. Um, maybe one day. I'd, I'd like to think that when you die, you'll be reincarnated as the baby goat that you killed. And then when you die as the goat, you're reborn again as you as a baby. And it's just an eternal cycle of that. You know, I never thought about that, but that sounds horrific. And thank you for implanting that in my mind. You have a good night, man. Thank you. You too. Hello? Hi. Holy shit, man. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right, man. How are you? Uh, I've been better, but uh, we're here living life. I've been better, but we're here living life. Is that how you re- do you tell? Okay, when you say we're here living life, and you say it as a um, a a way of dealing with whatever this thing is that you feel, what do you? What is you here living life feel like, and how is it a positive thing to counteract the negative things that you're feeling? I ho- really hope that what I said just now made sense. Uh, I was kind of jumbled, but I think I got the gist. Thank you for being uh, honest with me. <laughs> well, pretty much. I moved for a promotion, and I hated it, so I quit. And now we're here. Where did you move to? Uh, Massachusetts. From? New York. Yeah, that's not that bad. No, no, not terrible. Like people have three and a half hours from where I was before. People have walked from uh, New York to Massachusetts. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> um. Okay. Did your family come with you? Do you have a family? No. Nah, nope. I am single, and my family's in New York and other spots in the U.S. So. Oh shit! I'm out here All right. On my own. What were you doing before you moved for this promotion? Uh, same thing for the same company. Same thing for the same company. And then wh- how come you, did you hate it less when you were in New York or had you just been hating it 
and you were like, fuck it, let's finally just leave? Uh, I didn't hate it as much before, but uh, coming up here, basically I'm working at a branch that was not very established, and uh, basically being a good worker, I was putting, basically picking up all everybody else's slack. Yeah. And it was not working. Hmm. Um, okay, so now that you've quit, what do you do? You have a plan of what you want to do with yourself? Uh, well, since I live in a state that's legal and I liked selling weed when it was illegal, maybe I'll do it now legally. I love that idea. I love so much that that's like. I'm sure that there's lots of people who've made that um, made that jump before. Of like, they started like you know. As an illegal drug dealer, maybe like in fucking high school or college or whatever, and then finally the laws, you know. And look, they were just, you know, I think if you dealt weed uh, before it was legal, you're, you're. I don't think you're a criminal. I think you're just you're progressive. You know, you're ahead of the curve. Um, yeah, and now, a hipster, if you will. Yes. Um, and now you can deal weed legally. It's so beautiful. You know, it's cra- it's crazy. Go. You ever have you been to? Um, I was about to, I'm an idiot. Have you been to like a country where like weed is like super super illegal, where like they they'll throw you away for a long time? So I've never left the U.S., but I've been to states that are uh, kind of like that. <laughs> which which state is? I don't. You know the laws, I assume. What states are like that? Uh, Texas isn't too good on weed laws, that's for sure. And is that state like all all the people who are like getting super stoned in Austin? Are they uh, subject to the same laws, or is there like city laws or something? Uh, no, like that? I think they're subject to the same laws. I think it depends, though. So, I'm not like, you know, no, no, no way am I an expert at uh, Texas weed laws. <laughs> um, that sucks. That even like if you're like if you like if you're just a cool guy in a leather jacket smoking weed outside of a bar or something, they'll still arrest you. Believe so. That's crazy. Um, how long did you sell weed illegally for? Uh, a good couple of years. Okay. What? And um, this was in New York. Yeah. Was that your? With these couple of years, was that your full time gig? Was selling selling pot? Uh, for a bit. I pretty much started up when I was between jobs. And then it continued to supplement my income once I found another job. Okay. You know, making um, things work. Would, did you have fun selling weed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a lot of friends in, co- in, in high school who sold weed. And I always thought it, like, it always seemed fun to me. And they were always stressed out. And I'm sure it was stressful for them. Um, but I always it always seemed fun to me because they were always, like, zipping around town and like you know they they made all these friends from it and stuff but um yeah dude it's, it's almost like kind of like a social thing at the same time as it is right. you know a job i guess right right you know i i had friends that used to uh you know deliver chinese food and sell at the same time that was a blast that does sound kind of fun Would anyone, do you think, um, oh, I wanted to, do, okay, but were you worried about getting caught? Uh, yeah. I mean, technically I got caught once, but. What uh, happened? Uh, well, <clears throat> that's a bit of a story. You, you want me to tell the whole thing or summarize it? You want me to start in the middle and then we'll start at the beginning? Just how, do it. How you want to do this? Do you know what, tell me, I, I, you know what, what's your name again? I forgot. Jimmy. Jimmy, I like you. I want to hear your story. All right. So basically, I was driving with a buddy of mine, and uh, we see two of my friends in another car driving with me. You know, we're pulling up on them. And I decided to be an idiot, speed, and cut them off and be like, aha, flip them off. And oncoming traffic, a cop passed by. <clears throat> basically he pulled a U-turn and then I remembered I had an ounce of weed in the glove box. And then I kind of half-assed tried to run and then gave up. 
And then pretty much they gave me a shitload of tickets and a weed charge. Well, and but they well, what state was this? New York. All right. So it was they they don't like lock you up. They just give you like a charge or did they did they lock you up or arrest you? Uh they yeah, technically you're like brought to the station and processed and shit and then they just let you go. It's so crazy that people were but like It's illegal there now. Yeah, it's so crazy that people were like locked up for some people were locked up for like a long fucking time for stuff that like is is you can go to a like an Apple store looking place <laughs> and buy it. Yeah, there's people still locked up for that. It's, it's really uh, it sucks. Did they? Did they? Didn't they? Are there? I, feel I, like like, I bet this is something you could pardoned, research. Yeah, I bet this is something you could research. I don't know anything about. I'm talking with no knowledge of anything, but um. There must have been a campaign to, like, free those people who were, like, you know, got drug charges for drugs that are now legal. Yeah, I mean, it's only right. It's kind of a dick move to leave them locked up after it's been legalized. Total dick move. Um, now, when it, when I, when do you think they're going to legalize cocaine and, and you can make, like, the, the Apple Store cocaine place? <laughs> that just reminds me, there was actually in... I think it's GTA 5. There's a little blurb in the radio talking about a proposition to legalize cocaine, and that shit always made me laugh. And that's what that just reminded me of. Do you think? What do you do? You think they should make all drugs legal? Oh, uh, at least like decriminalize and try to like treat people that are addicted instead of just treating it as a uh, crime and shoving people in jail. Um. What's the name of this? What's so you're gonna start a weed store? Uh, I mean, I'll probably start as a bud tender, but uh, that'd be a pretty dope career plan. What now? I you know when you go in, when you apply for a job as a bud tender, can you use past experience illegally selling drugs as part of your resume you know because i think you should that's a good question i feel like you should be able to use it it's relevant experience to the job but i i I don't know but it is definitely relevant experience you're definitely right it'd be funny if you had like a you know how so in high school like the drug dealer kids would like post a picture of a huge nug on their snapchat story and just be like swipe up like, if you just showed up to the interview with, like, a portfolio of the huge nug pics that you would post on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can I can market. I'm a marketing. Exactly. You know, I myself, I, you and know? exactly, you laugh, but it would be a good... I, I, if I were hiring bud tenders for my weed business, I would be like, yes, I want this guy. Look at him. He put in the effort. He knows. Hmm. Okay, so you were uh, well. Uh, so tell me this: you started out this conversation saying that you have been better, and yet it sounds as though, through us talking, that you have um, um, a a nice uh, uh, I don't know path forward for yourself. It sounds like you are optimistic about the future. What's what's the deal? Yeah, just I kind of feel stupid that I moved up here for this opportunity and I ended up hating it. But at the same time, it's kind of like uh, if I didn't do it, I would have been questioning whether I should have or not. Right. Why do you feel stu- Why do you feel stupid? That doesn't make sense to feel stupid about that. Uh, just because uh, I guess it just didn't work out, basically. Okay. As I would hope. Do you feel you feel like? Um, yeah, because you know. Look, not to not to act like a fake therapist on the internet, but this belief you have that um, that uh, this was stupid is um, I hope you uh, eradicate that from your brain because it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. It's just negative thought processing for some reason. I mean, you were offered a position with more money. Um, and with the, uh, information that you had to go off at the time, you were like, this could be a good idea. I, you know, I actually, I, I'm going to tell you something. I think if you were still in the job, I think that would have been, that would be stupid. 
I actually think you made the not stupid decision by leaving. I mean, I guess I guess I'm just considering it kind of stupid just because uh, I don't have another job lined up 100 percent yet. Um, and I still got bills to pay, but I mean, I do have money in the bank. I didn't just be like, yeah, I have no, absolutely no plan. But still, I'm not trying to put a gigantic dent in my bank account at the same time. Well, um, you can go to the Taco Bell parking lot and get some references to put down on your resume and build up a um, giant portfolio of nugs. And I think you'll be on your way in <laughs> no time. Yeah, I mean, that's, that seems like a good place to start. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm going to say this one more time. Um, I, I think it would be stupid of you to waste your life, um, you know, staying at a thing you hate. Especially if, you know, you feel like there's a different avenue to pursue. Hmm. What are you going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do tomorrow? That's a good question. I don't really have a plan at this second. Is that a... Is... Are you going to start... Like, when are you going to start going door-to-door, flyering yourself as the next hot bud tender in Massachusetts? Or are you going back to New York? Uh, no, I, I hate moving. I'm staying here for now. Okay. At least until my lease is up. <laughs> is, weed, is weed legal in Massachusetts? Yes. Oh, sick. Dude, it's like legal everywhere now. Yeah, I'm just pissed because they legalized it like right before I left New York, and I'm like, damn, I could have just stayed. <laughs> it's okay. Um, when are you, are you gonna go tomorrow? Why don't you fly? Why don't you go around to all the weed shops and flyer yourself as a as a as the hot new bud tender in town? I don't know. I feel like most places don't do in person shit anymore, and you they just say, oh, the application's online. Um. Right, but you go. I feel like I'm your father right now. You're right, but you go in and they see your face, Daddy and then they use, you're like, you took it too far. Um, <laughs> you go in, they see your face, and they're like, "Oh, this is a real guy." I, like, there's something to that, right? When they see your application, then you know. I guess it puts puts a, puts a face to the application. I mean, you have nothing else to do tomorrow. No, no, not really. Oh, maybe laundry. That that may be on my list of things to do tomorrow. Okay. I, I hate laundry as much as you say you hate laundry. I cannot stand laundry. I wait until I, the last minute. I don't think you do, and you know how I know you do. You know how you know how I know you don't hate laundry as much as I hate laundry. Because I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> you're going to do it. <laughs> so that was wrong that that you said that just now. You do not hate laundry. Actually, I did laundry yesterday, and it's. I have a, I have a pile I, I have I have a pile of every time I do laundry I fuck it up it's my laundry's all soggy I didn't put it in long enough so I just have a pile uh, of like soggy on. clothes in my oh, apartment that I have not um, hung up and you know what I want to do I want to get high and forget about the laundry but in order to do that I need to live in a country populated by um, uh, uh, knowledgeable. Bud, t- I'm trying to link this back to our conversation. Knowledgeable bud tenders, <laughs> with with impeccable spirits, such as yourself, Jarrett Jimmy, and so go fucking get out there and put your. You clearly have a knack for dealing drugs, and um, <laughs> it would be a a a um, slight to the universe for you to not use it to your best ability. Oh, I, I appreciate that. I'm going to uh, put my nose to the grindstone and get out there. Is there anything else you want to say to me or to God or to Jimmy Neutron before we go? Well, Lyle, I just want to appreciate, uh, you know, show you my appreciation for you taking my call tonight, man. Thanks, I mean, man. it was only the second time I've ever watched you live. I oh, literally yeah. just got a Twitch to watch you live. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Well, um, I hope you enjoy all of the other things that Twitch has to offer, like, um, you know, a guy playing Minecraft and not saying anything. There's some, some people are really, some people are somehow really good at playing Minecraft and not saying anything. I don't know why I'm, I'm not trying to talk (laughs) shit, I'm just 
trying to be funny and saying stupid things. All right. Um, hey, good luck to you, man. I hope when I, I don't next time I come to are you in Boston? Yeah, I'm near Boston. Okay. Hopefully one day I'm going to be in Boston with nothing to do and I'll walk into a weed shop and there you'll be. There I'll be waiting to help you out. God bless. All right. Hey, good luck to you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night, Lyle. I don't know if I think all drugs should be legal. I hate talking about um, like any any even any even slightly any kind of social political philosophy thing on here because w- then like one day I'm gonna like listen back to this and be like I don't know what the fuck I, I mean I I never really know what I'm saying but um I guess all drugs should be legal and then everyone can just decide if the whether or not they want to do them. I, I th- all right. That was I'm I'm moving on. Call from Lindsay. Hello. Hi. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. What's going on with you, Lindsay? Yeah, I'm currently in a situationship with my boss. Ah, uh, okay. Um, tell me, tell me more. Um. Oh. <laughs> Am I on the stream right now? You are on the stream right now. Okay, you yeah, seem to be. Say, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. You seem to. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a more specific question. You are in yeah. a situation with your boss, and I can see, but I could just the fact that you're calling me to talk about it. I'm gonna assume that you have conflicting feelings about this situation you are in. So, what are the conflicting feelings that you have? I'm definitely having conflicting feelings. Um, I know that it's wrong. I know that it's a bad idea. However. We met on a dating app before I started at the place that I work at. Okay. Well, look, let's break this. Th- tell me, tell me about the whole situation. How did you meet this guy? What's the deal? Where do you work? All that. Give me, give me, give me the as they would call them, juicy details. Okay. Well, I work at like a um, a chain restaurant kind of a little bit so it's very fast paced and it's very fast food kind of thing um but it's a very close work environment i will say um there's not very many people that work in the kitchen Mm -hmm. um and so that makes it very difficult to have this kind of situation i guess okay so you said that you 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 said i know it's wrong yeah. Um, what what about this situation do you believe to be wrong? Um, <laughs> hmm. Well, I mean, just like the ethics of it, like the work code ethics of like the fact that he's my boss and I am under him technically. Um, okay. But we met as like individual people. And... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You work at a restaurant. Yeah. Okay, you work at a restaurant. You don't work at the White House. Let's, yes, let's, this is correct. That's so. So I think the general, like, you know, I mean, is let me ask you this: Is he is is this relationship affecting your work in some way? I would say no. Okay, just more. And you so two like met as I individuals outside of work. Yes. Okay. But he didn't realize that it was me when I started working there. Does that make sense? Um. Hmm. So you guys met on a dating app, and then you started working there, and then he didn't mm-hmm. realize. And then and then he was like, "Oh shit, it's you." Yeah. After I brought it up, because I realized, and then I was like, "Oh fuck." Okay. Um. All right. Uh, do you like this guy? Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. Why is it unfortunate? Because like he's like really cool, and I get along okay. with him really well, That's and awesome. I really don't know. But it's not awesome because like he's my boss, and I kind of want this job, and I kind of want to still also. Uh, I don't know, man. Are you a fr- Are you let me okay? Because here's. Are you afraid that if things were to go awry with this guy, 
that it would then start to affect your uh your work environment like if things got weird between us like if like we did something and then did did work out or something like that yeah if if you decided to break things off would do you do you feel like that would affect the workplace the workplace environment <sighs> he's really cool so probably no because of how safe of a space he is honestly if i'm okay, being real great. Okay, well, because that was what I was going to say, because I was going to say, look, if this dude really is like, you know, a good guy, a nice guy, he, I, I don't think he would, you know, you're at risk of him going some kind of weird retaliation mode upon you, you know? Yeah. If that is what you are afraid of. So, and that's based on past things, you know? Okay. Uh, have you? Okay. So have, uh, you said this based on past things. Have Have you been in a situation like this in the past that went poorly? Um, no, I've been in a poor. <laughs> I've been in a really unfortunate relationship. I'll just say that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can elaborate if you want, but it's like not an important thing right now. You know. Well, what I only mean? again, only if you think it's it's only if you think it's relevant to what we're talking about. Um. I. I would say I'll just say that it's a relationship that has given me traumas that are very relevant to the things that I deal with day to day. So um he has been very understanding and comforting in that and that is one of the reasons I, I was so drawn to him because of how willing to help. Okay. Okay. How long have you been seeing this guy? Well so so, so that's the thing. It's not like a we're not seeing each other or anything like that. We're just talking to each other. Do, and do you do you have the do you have the desire or even vaguely see the potential for for this to be like a actual boyfriend girlfriend thing? I don't. That's I don't know. I don't know. I like I in my delusional little headspace, I would love to think that. But also the other part of my cynical brain is saying no. You know what I mean? Well, wait a minute. You said delu- – why Why are you saying delusional headspace? Why is this uh, okay, delusional? Okay, okay. I have borderline personality disorder. Okay. <laughs> this makes me overthink things a lot. Okay. Hence why I watch your stream a lot. It makes me um, – it balances me out a lot. That's cool. I'm you know? glad to hear that. Well, so, Okay. I'm trying to think here. So you, so so okay, you could, you're like, without judging the the thoughts as 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 delusional or whatever it is. Do you like yeah. plain and simple? Do you do you like this guy and desire to like date him? Date him. At this point in my life, no, because I need, I know okay. I need to work on myself as a person, but. It was open on the table for friends with benefits before. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and that's so, why it's like a weird thing. Okay. So why did you? Okay. It, it sounds like, and tell me if I'm tell me if I'm reading this appropriately. It sounds like you like this guy. He's a good guy. You know, you have uh, uh, needs. That he's uh, f- fulfilling, and that's always nice. And um, f- for all that I am understanding, your your relationship with this guy has been a a positive force in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, but you are are concerned with how it might affect the workplace in the event it would go awry. Yet. What you observe from him is that he's a nice guy and that, you know, he's a reasonable human being and thus would mm-hmm. not, uh, you know, go bonkers mode on you from from your yeah. judgment of from from your personal judgment of, of him uh, 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 that you've been, you know, made with the time that you've spent with him. Mm-hmm. Um, is that all accurate? Is that what I'm getting at? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, t- take me, take me to the to the to the to the end of the overthinking. Where does the overthinking ultimately lead? What negative place does this overthinking ultimately lead us to? What's the worst like the worst case, case scenario? scenario? Yeah, the worst case. Oh scenario. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
like him getting in trouble at his job. <laughs> oh, him getting in trouble. Yeah, like I don't want him to get in trouble. I don't want anything to happen to him because like, you know what I mean? I'm the one who started later like in work, you know, and I just don't want to be the one that comes in and screws it up for him. Is here's the th- is it dude doesn't everybody in the restaurant industry fucking date and fuck each other? I mean, uh, yeah, but this is like such close quarters. I've never worked in a restaurant this close quarters. I've worked in restaurants before, but like, damn, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, here's the thing. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say, as far as it look at my personal opinion, as far as like ethics go, like I don't, mm-hmm. I your. I think your status as a human being and his status as a human being are uh, greater than your statuses of of working at this restaurant, and therefore I don't think it's inappropriate for you guys to, um, you know, engage with each other as human beings do. Um, so that aside, I understand you wanting to look at the situation and going like, um, how could this somehow negatively affect me or him? It's a reasonable thing to to look at. Um, but from everything you're telling me, and again, you you are in this situation and you've you've kind of seems as though you've thought a lot about it. It does not seem as though it has like the the potential for strong negative outcomes, but I don't I don't know that's that's kind of the decision you have to evaluate and make yeah but i don't think it like, is, i don't think it's a i don't think it's morally reprehensible it's again it's not like you work at like it's not like you're like a fucking you know teacher the uh, ta or something it's not it's not anything yeah. weird it's just a restaurant yeah like i'm not being a fucking like predator or anything I, this is a normal okay okay yeah See, it sounds a lot more um, normal and okay when I talk to you about it. So thank you for that. <laughs> have you talked to... Who else have you talked to about this? Uh, no one. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I don't... I, I think it's I think it's okay. I think, like I said, I think your statuses as human beings override your statuses as, uh, you know, uh, a waitress... Even though, like, it's my manager. <laughs> well, okay. So again, the I'm not. I have no moral concern over this. It's all about you making the decision of if you think it will end, if you think it has the potential to end poorly for you. But from what you have told me, you believe that this guy is a good dude, and even if you had to come to him and be like. Hey, I don't think this is going to work out. I don't want to see you in that way anymore. That he would be like, okay, that's totally cool. And that it wouldn't affect, uh, you know, things at work. Mm -hmm. And if you believe that that is true, then it does not sound like you have anything uh, to worry about. Okay. Is there any anything else floating around in this situation that you are feel as though you are overthinking or I mean like always everything just because of how I feel like my head works right now as it be but um specifically with this it's just more like I don't want to project anything onto him or I don't want to make him have to worry about anything that's going on with me and I also recognize that he cares about me as a person and so I'm trying to find the line between like where that is as a friend who cares, where that is as a situation who cares, or where that is like wanting to go forward, and I literally can't figure out the difference. Um, do you feel like you have a good line of communication with him? Do you feel like you can talk to him about these these things that you are thinking? Um, not on the phone, but over text. Yes. Not on the phone, but over text. Okay. But but communi- you can commute you could talk to him about these things, uh, none nonetheless in some type of medium. Like but like can I just like express my emotions about it? Yes. Yes, I can for sure. Okay, good. All right. Well, that's that's I feel like the most 
important thing. What do you make at this restaurant? What's the, what do they specialize in? Pizza. <laughs> you work at a pizza restaurant? Yes, but I'm trying not to give too much detail. Yeah, that makes sense. Look, here's the thing. I don't think that I don't think this will be the biggest scandal in the pizza industry. You you don't think Papa John beat it or anything? No, I think I think you're gonna be okay. <sighs> okay, so what what do I what do I do about this? What am I going forward? What do you do moving for? What do you what do you do moving forward? What does that mean? Like, okay, so now we've established that it's not gonna necessarily hurt. Like, the world's not gonna crumble if I do something about this if i decide hey you want to you want to maybe take this somewhere or whatever if the world's not going to crumble then how do the, i approach this okay so we've established that the world is not going to crumble if you ask this guy if he wants to be your like a boy like in a real relationship with you no 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 no. If we just want to like flirt more and probably be friends with benefits and maybe that down the line but like that's not anything i'm looking for right now you you say you say exactly what you just told me to him. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> is that what what are you what do you is that does that is that sound like a difficult thing to do? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely okay. difficult. Okay, but, also, but it's like, good practice. It's good. To... It's a good. It's good practice, though. It's good to, um, you know, you're working on communication skills. You could, I, say, I mean, and I you know, look, if you ever ask him for a promotion, you could bring this up as, as, uh, you know, an example of your good communication skills. Well, no, it's so hard. Like when we're having a serious day at work, because I can't just like look at him and like not think of like the pictures I've seen. You know what I mean? Oh God. <laughs> well, um, what's your name again? Lindsay. Lindsay. Does he ever send you one of those pictures and you you send back, you're like, damn, put that on a pizza. <laughs> Is the fuck? No. Oh, fuck. That's hilarious, okay. though. Well. No, it's only been like one picture, but like now it's been burned in my brain hole. Well, Lindsay, um, good luck to you. Um, you're not, I, I think you're going to be okay. And uh, okay. is there anything else that you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, thank you to everyone for listening. And thank you to you for taking calls all night and just being a person that listens when I get on the phone. I appreciate you so much. I listened to your stuff for a long time, and it's really helped me with my um, recovery and just being in my own head and that kind of thing. It helps me with other people's well, perspective. Yeah. So thank you. Well, thanks, man. I have, I'm having fun tonight. This is cool. I'm fucking... Uh, uh, I'm... I'm I'm back. I'm home ish. I don't know what ish, I don't yeah. know. I don't. I don't know where I'm going to be at the time that I'm putting this podcast out. But as the time I'm recording this, I'm home and I'm. I'm I get. I get antsy and in my head. So it's fun to talk to other people to get me out of that. So thank you, Lindsay, and uh, have a good night. And um, uh, keep keep making pizzas. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Okay. Have a you good too. night, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Penis on a pizza. Penis pizza. I'll have one slice of penis pizza, please. And can I also get some jizz on my penis pizza? So take a slice of penis and a little ranch side, like you know, the cups they put ranch in, put some jizz in it and make a, pe make a little penis pizza. All right, sorry. Call from not basketball band. Two. Not bothering this. No, no, you're doing God's work right now. You shut your whole mouth. Uh, <laughs> not right. Not right. What is this? Who am I on the thing with? Hello. Hi. What up? What's your name? I. Um, not basketball dan all right don't several me i don't even know how long ago it was I, I you know here's the thing i normally don't take repeat callers i really i normally don't i'm ne i've never been a good um update guy i don't know why i think it's because i don't like to alienate people who haven't 
who didn't hear the call already. So I'm not I'm not a big update guy. Um, I know people have been wanting updates. Maybe I should do updates. Maybe I'm just stubborn. But yeah, basketball, yeah, Dan. Yeah. Uh, I, I I mean, how long ago? I don't know how long it was we talked. I still get comments all the time about about basketball, Dan. I'm gonna quit. What if I told you the update was now I'm Stone Cold Captain Basketball Dan, hyphen the fifth logo. I told you I I would tell you I have no fucking idea what that means. As much as I had no idea what anything you were saying meant the last time I talked to you. Checks out. Who are you? What? I am actually with the man who gave me the monitor basketball ban. Are you? What's what? What's it, like? What is your location exactly? What is this like? What? Where are you in a car? Where are you? I am at a bar because I didn't think I was gonna get through. You're at a bar right now. You're like fully in public right yeah, now. Of course. Uh, Basketball Dan in his natural habitat. Okay. Well, I don't really know what to do with you, Basketball Dan. What did you do? Is there something you wanted out of this? Yeah, so the last time I called, you were like, who is Basketball Dan? But then I was wondering, who is the therapy gecko? I'm not doing this. I'll do, I'm not doing this with you, Basketball Dan. All right, checks out. What bar are you at? What bar? Yeah, what bar? It's called Frank and Tony's, but they should rename it to Basketball Dan. So you still go by Basketball Dan? Correct. And do you play basketball? Not at all. I don't need to because I'm Basketball Dan. Okay. Do you... Has your life changed in any meaningful way since we last talked? The only thing I really know about you is that your name is Basketball Dan. I tried to get other answers from you, but they all kind of led back to your name being Basketball Dan. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, well, so now, now sometimes they call me Stone Cold Captain Basketball Dan hyphen the fifth logo. And right, I've made it. That. Yeah. And okay. Has yeah, that, has it. this has that changed your life in any meaningful way? Well, you being na- here's like you being named Basketball Dan has had nothing to do with your actual life, and so you being named Stone Cold, whatever you just said, I assume also has nothing to do with your actual life or anything going on in it. Right. I think you might be my arch and my arch nemesis, Basketball Dan. Oh yeah. I think you might also be my arch nemesis, Therapy oh, yeah? Gecko. Are you going to come find me? Are you going to come defeat me? Um, who knows? I did I almost know. actually come to that show in Columbus. Oh, you should have came. How come you didn't come? I know, I should have. I had to work the next day. Do something? You work? Okay, so what do you do? You do things with your life. You're not just the most one-dimensional entity I've ever come into contact with. You have a job. You have friends. You have... What do you do for work? Uh... I played the fifth. Alright, I'll talk to you again. I'm I'm invoking my fifth amendment right. (laughs) Alright. Well, there we go. We did it. We had a repeat caller. If for those of you who who have you know been requesting that we follow up with some of the callers, that's that's a little sample of what it might be like. Let me know if if you enjoyed that, and we'll do it more. I mean, probably not, but who knows. 